Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Fur here showing you another fresh Shadowers deck to try out over the weekend. Before we are starting, let me give you the usual legal disclaimer that this video is sponsored by the developers of Shadowers. I'm really grateful for their support so far, so if you like what you see in this video, you can download the game for free on Steam, Apple devices and Android phones. Download links are available in the video description. Now on to today's deck and this is one that really emerged out of the dust when the latest balance patch hit the server. Before the patch a few weeks ago you were seeing Vengeance Bloodcraft from time to time but it wasn't really a dominating force. After the patch on the other hand the numbers were skyrocketing and right now the Vengeance Bloodcraft archetype is one of the most played decks on the ladder only slightly behind Midrange Shadowcraft but way ahead of strong meta decks like Ranked Ramcraft or the Aegis Heavencraft. This is the result of an overall strong performance right now, plus the ability to play various different successful builds, giving deck builders plenty of opportunities to try out unique ideas and styles. The main reason why Vengeance Bloodcraft is as good as it is nowadays is surely to be found in the Temples of the Gods legendary Belphegor. This little Horned Devil not only allows you to refill your hand with two additional cards, but on top of that it also functions as an enabler for the Vengeance ability. You as a Vengeance Bloodcraft player are normally looking to finish the game kinda early on, which also means that you will be the aggressor in most matchups, while your opponent is looking forward to defend against your attacks. Because of that, it is not that painful for yourself if you deal damage to your own life points and pushing those down, when your opponent himself is not able to take advantage of that. You are speeding up your own game, refilling your hand and trying to keep the pressure up all the time. After Vengeance is getting activated for you, you will get a bunch of additional very valuable and cheap effects on the board that should allow you to take down the victory. Cards like the Dark Air Gemma, the Dark General or the Devil of Vengeance will all benefit from Vengeance a lot, thus improving your mid to end game. If you are personally unhappy with a few of the card choices, there are plenty of different cards and builds to try out, so do some experiments and see what is the most fitting for yourself. For example, if you like a slower playstyle, the Blood Moon and Master of the Black Death amulets are really interesting additions to the Vengeance Bloodcraft archetype. For some more early damage plus extra card draws on the other hand, you might find the right choice in the gold amulet Dire Bond. Whatever you are trying, you should have a lot of fun with the deck and decent success on the ladder as well. So enjoy the power of Bloodcraft Vengeance. To give you a better picture of the deck, I will also show you some gameplay. After that, don't hesitate to use the comment section if there are still questions left. So our first matchup will be Bloodcraft versus Shadowcraft. That will be interesting. So we are facing the strongest class currently in the game. The start here is really not what we like to see. So we're replacing everything. We want to have our early units that we can play on turn 1, 2 and 3. Fortunately, nothing to be played here on turn 1 right now. But I mean we have Spiderweb in for the second turn, we have the Vampire Noble for turn 3. So especially if he's not going too aggressive here, we should be fine. So still nothing to play on turn 1. Then we are definitely starting with the Spiderweb Imp. Spiderweb Imp is dealing 2 damage in our face, so totally fine. That's a Shadow Reaper. He's dropping that early without another unit on the board. So now that's the that's our one drop. That's uh, still dropping the spider weapon, of course. Interesting that he's dropping the Reaper here that early, because the Reaper has no chance to get buffed right now, so he's staying at 1-1, and we can just kill that here with the spider weapon. So that's that's the situation where you don't like to go just for the face. Oh, Chimera. Yeah, I mean, still not helping the Reaper. Still not helping the Reaper. We are dropping the Vampire Noble. We're killing the Reaper, of course. And right now... We will just get, with the Vampire Noble, we get more Forest Bats here on the board, so stronger board presence. And uh, there's Grimnir, so Grimnir is definitely going down here. Skull Beast can evolve now. Question is, uh, what do we want to do? We have the Demon Commander Lara, which could give an Allied Follower Storm Vengeance active for us. That is not happening, of course, right now. But I'm probably still playing that here. Probably still playing that. That's just way too good. I mean, otherwise we could go for Razor Claw, for example, kill the Grimnir. That would also be not too bad. So we could play Razor Claw and Ambling. Keeping the Demon Commander for later to push more damage in the face. Yeah, okay, we're doing that. Let's just do that. The so Razor Claw, killing the Grimnir. Then we are just evolving the... Uh, the Vampire Noble. Go for that. And let's push six in the face. The opponent is down to 13. 
His units right now are not strong enough to clear the Vampire Noble, so he needs another unit that can kill the Vampire Noble. He needs to do that and then evolving. We're still getting, of course, one for his bat. And the other two units here are not strong enough for the Vampire Noble. Ooh, he's attacking that directly, getting some skeletons on the board. And just another Bone Chimera. Ooh, he's, he is interested in some shadows here. So the board will be full with a lot of skeletons, which on the other hand means if he is... Oh, he's not killing... Oh, he's leaving the Vampire Noble on the board. Soul Conversion. Look at that. He's probably uh, looking forward to see some Prince Catacomb. Oh, he's just clearing his own board. Very interesting style here. So we still have everything on the board, more or less. That is 7 damage right now. He's down to 13. We have the Demonic Strike. We have the Dance of Death, for example. We have indeed a lot of damage. So, wow. Uh, I would say we will just use the Dance of Death here. And we are going for a little evolution, pushing more damage into the face. We don't care for the skeletons here. Not at all. It's just serving us of the victory here on the tablet. Going down to two and with the demonic strike, we have enough to kill him next turn. There's no chance for him whatsoever, even if he's clearing the board. Pretty unusual, he should have killed the vampire noble. Not sure what he was trying to achieve there. And by the way, everything you are seeing here is played in double A1. So it's not like we are playing in the beginner section. Ah, he's evolving a skeleton, so Vampire Noble going down. Still not really helping us. I think they're helping him. I mean, we still have enough damage on the board. Uh, yeah. So what else will you play? Ah, okay. That would help him. But still, the demonic, the demonic strike is just way too good. Ambling would also be one more point of damage. So that's three in the face, and we're taking care of the first victory. Game two, Bloodcraft versus Swordcraft. So expect some nice little face damage action. Hungering Horde, Ambling, Urius. Uh, don't like to start with the Hungering Horde. We like to start nonetheless with the Ambling and the Urius. So that's pretty, pretty good. Also get the Vampire Noble perfect curve here. Have to play something for the first turn, for the first three turns. Plus, of course, we get two extra cards. So we should also find something to play on turn four. There's Katana Unsheeted. Giving us one damage directly in the face. So let's see Quick Blader just with a different artwork. Ambling is coming. That's another one in our face, but also one in the opponent's face. Plus our unit is stronger than the small katana here. So we might just do a little trade. Yeah, especially with another unit on the board. We want to save the Uriel, so we are trading a bit, only slightly. Taking care of one unit, which will give him the katana. So whenever he's not dropping a unit, he's getting damage from the Uriels, which should totally be fine. And we can just drop the Vampire Noble. Oh, look at that. He's dropping double knights. That is kind of expensive. He's just going for the face again. Goblin. Wow, that is a super good stuff. I guess, guess we want to trade here instead of just going for the face. So the Vampire Noble is kind of helping us. He will take care of a few of the units here. So he's losing two units and the other units are just at one attack so they are just running into the Vampire Noble and giving us another two forest bats. So then he's spawning another unit most likely. He's getting one more point in the face. The Wee's Trooper. Yeah, that's one damage in the face. He's down to 15. Trading, probably also killing... He's not even killing the Urius. Wow. That is super greedy, my friend. Got the Embling, got the Blood Wolf. With that, we are then down to 10, which means the Devil of Vengeance is also getting activated. We can evolve here. So that's what we are doing. And I would say we are kind of want to kill the Novice Trooper as well. So let's evolve the Ambling here instead of the other units. We will kill then those two units as well. Still keeping the Yuris on the board, so that is then another three in the face. If he's dropping a unit now, that's at least one more point in his face. So push them down to 10. We can use the Dance of Death to kill the unit, which would be another 2 in his face. And then the implants are coming on turn 6. Also going for the Dance, which is pushing us down to 8. Totally okay. Only problem is that we are not... Oh, he's just conceding. Would have probably, with no chance here, get just too much damage on board. So that's another victory. Oh, last but not least, we have another Shadowcraft player. Pretty unexpected. Three more Shadowcrafts here. Uh, we're going second. Vampire Noble, Hungering Horde. Let's just replace everything. 
want our one drop here not happening but at least we got Urius. we have the vampire noble again not sure that is always happening always get the same cards again from the mulligan our opponent luckily has nothing to play on turn one so normally you can see a skull beast here from time to time that's at the moment most likely the only one drop the shadowcraft player is playing if he's not going super aggressive and turn two will be a little soul squasher, which is kind of okay because Urius will then definitely survive. He needs to play another unit if he's not going for, for example, a zombie party here. So he's then dropping a unit. We are getting at least one damage in the face with the Urius. He has a bone chimera. There you go. And he's attacking Urius, which is pretty fine, I would say. Gives us the option. Gives us the option to drop the Vampire Noble and to kill the little Soul Squasher. Otherwise, the Soul Squasher is killing the Vampire Noble, so that's what we are doing. Losing the damage here from the Urios, but on the other hand, we're also making sure that the Vampire Noble is spawning more forest bats. Should be pretty beneficial. And with the Hungering Horde here, he's spawning two skeletons, so if we use the Hungering Horde on the next turn, we can just kill all the skeletons. Ooh, especially. Please just attack. Please attack. That would be so great if he's going for an attack. Oh, he's using soul conversion. That's also totally fine. We're just killing all skeletons here. That is really amazing. Would also be cool if we get something else to play on our turn. He's even attacking also. so we can go for the face. That is not good. Oh, okay. So that is good. <laughs> all right. So then we are not using the hungering horde, of course. Oh, that that is a sucker. So if he has four allied cards in play you can change the cost of this card to zero and then you will destroy all allied followers and uh, that makes sense then to uh, use the skeletons here oh it would have been so nice with the hungering horde oh, we have a diabolic drain that could deal four damage uh, right now i would i would say we're just dropping the vampire noble another one to we'll then evolve our first vampire noble and pushing the damage here in the face we can still use the diabolic drain if we want to um, next turn we can use the demonic strike next turn stuff like that if he's going to attack one of the units here, we are still getting a false bat, which then can push more damage into the face. So everything is kind of fine. So far, so good, I would say. And you're not seeing the Lord here that often in decks. He is, in fact, not that strong on average. So in this situation where he, had, where he got four skeleton on the board, of course, that was super great. He was only losing four attack, four defense points by getting an 8-8 for zero. So that was pretty good. Uh, evolving the Skull Beast. Probably so. Is he killing this one or the smaller? Depends on if he if he likes to have a skull beast surviving here or if he likes the 8 8 surviving with more um, points. Going for the smaller one, okay. Me? Really? So Lord's also attacking, I would assume. Leaves him down to three, so we can just go for the demonic strike. Oh, Phantom Horn. Yeah, I mean that is also giving us a lot of a lot of bats. Yeah, he's going for that, wow. So we are getting bats here on the board. Well, he is he's surviving his lord, so he's probably just going for the face with that. Isn't that true? It is true, so that's 8 in the face. Which on the other hand means that Vengeance is nearly active for us. We got the Razory Claw. Ooh, that's nice. So we can make sure that Vengeance is getting activated and the Diabolic Drain is going down to 1. Uh, which is pretty, pretty good. So let's just hit that. Now the Diabolic Drain is only costing one, which is excellent. We can also play the Hungering Horde. So I would say we will just use the Hungering Horde here on this little guy. Then the Diabolic Drain on the Lord. We can kill that. We're also healing back, of course. And we are pushing another five then into the face. The opponent is down to eight. More damage is incoming with the Demonic Strike on the next turn. So that will be another three that we can push. Right now we have five on the board, we have three in hand, so that will be exactly eight, exactly the number that we need. Cerberus, so expect that he's evolving Cerberus, killing our nice little forest bat. There you go, yeah, yeah. The question is if he is using the Mimi and the Coco as well. He's not using that. He can still push the damage here, that's a goblin. Okay, goblin is totally fine, we got the, oh, Dance of Death is even better. So uh, we cannot kill him here, but what we can do is, of course, kill the Zerberos. We still have 12, so he is not able to kill us, even with uh, Mimi and Coco. Let's see, that will be four. 
Then he can use a Phantom All, for example, will be another 5 then that he can push, will be 9 in total. And he then has only one play point left, so he cannot kill us here. Uh, that shouldn't be shouldn't be possible. So let's evolve the forest bat. Push four more on the face. Then we just need the demonic strike on the next turn to win the game. I'm definitely looking forward to do that. Uh, he he might just get some uh, wards here on the board, but that's not helping him, of course. He would need some healing, and he's not running any healing. If he's, for example, drop the demon lord Ishtar, that is just good for a bit more damage in the face, and he can kill the board. But it's not like we cannot kill him. So it's very unlikely that he's going to kill us here. I don't think there is any combination of cards that can push 12 now in this situation. There's a Phantom Hall. So that is 5 on the board. With his two spell cards in the hand, yeah, he's not killing us. So he's losing the game. With the two spell cards in his hand, he could have pushed another 4, which would be then 9 in total. Still missing 3 points and with one play point left. That is not happening for him. There you go, Coco for a bit more damage and he's why are you trading with that that does make too much sense if he has no if he's playing another unit then of course that does make kind of sense otherwise i would have used that on another unit and the goblin is staying here on the board the ghosts are just getting banished at the end of the turn yeah so he was not doing anything it was better for him to just use that on the ghost and keep the goblin not sure why we would do that Totally doesn't make any sort of sense. We will just go for the demonic strike here and win the third game as well. And with that, I'm at the end of today's episode, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Try out the deck for yourself. It's working really decently on the ladder at the moment. And I hope to see you then in the next Shadow Wars episode. Have a good night and bye-bye.